back to my garage and I got a new thing to tell you, a new little tool, new toy I got from Amazon. It is a digital code scanner. Now I've got one of these here. It's also old school kind of just beeps and um, gives an audible beep and it also gives a little light that blinks um, that displays the codes. So as you know, these are fuel injected cars. So the first year of the fuel injected five liter and it is computer controlled. So it's fuel injected, it's computer controlled. It has an EEC4 computer in it, which is OBD1. And even though it is old school, for 86, it's pretty high tech, which is kind of cool because it does actually store codes. And the codes will kind of give us an indication of what the computer thinks might be wrong with an engine and help you diagnose, diagnose issues with it. So I'm not having any issues with my car, but I haven't looked at the motor once at all. I've actually, uh, just check the air filter and oil basics in it and um, really have no drivability problems in it at all. It does search a little bit on idle. Um, so I decided to pick up another scanner. This one is cool. So this is a, this is an Innova 3145 that I got on Amazon for 26 bucks. Why is this cool? Because it has a digital readout. So if you guys know anything about these EEC4 computers and these Fords, you know that when you plug these in, it'll beep and you have to count the beeps or write the beeps down, remember in your head, whatever, you have a bunch of codes, you're sitting there with a pen and paper and you're jotting down all the beeps. And the number of time this thing beeps indicates a digit. These cars will have two digit error codes. Some of the later EEC4 Fords will actually read out three digit codes. So you could have three codes and then followed by a pause and then another code so anyways there, there's some learning I guess you have to do in order to be able to plug one of these in and run it and then actually figure out what codes that it is um, barking about so you also know these 86 Mustangs don't have a check engine light so you don't really know if the check engine light's been tripped technically on an 87 and up it's going to have a check engine light and any fault code that the computer might see is going to trip that check engine light on your dash. So we don't have that, so we really don't know. The only way to know is to plug in one of these scanners and scan it and see what the code is tripping about or see if you have any codes at all. So this is pretty cool and we're going to run through it, but I just wanted to show you guys that this is a pretty neat little scanner. It comes with a hefty book. Now most of the stuff's in multiple languages so the English portion is about that thick but it's a good read because once you start reading through it it kind of gives you a history of the Ford EEC computer systems and it kind of gives you an idea of how this one works in the basics rudimentary basics of Ford fuel injection it also gives you extreme detailed steps on how to run this tool on the engine and it also gives you a list of error codes so you don't have to look it up on the internet once you're done you can just simply refer to this book, flip through it, find your error code, write it down. One thing I want to mention, there's three basic tests, okay? You've got the key on engine off test, which is simply plugging the scanner in, turning the key on, pressing the test button, and it'll click a whole bunch of solenoids and relays and actually turn on sensors, look for issues, and it's going to display those issues here. When it does display that, it'll give you a little O indicating that the code is in key on engine off code. After that, it's going to display anything that's in continuous memory. So that means that's what's stored in the computer um, and has been stored permanently until you reset it. And then it will display here as it's the letter C. So that's two, that's two modes. You've got the uh, key on engine off, which is the O, and the C, which is continuous memory, which is technically also key on engine off um, method. And then you have the key on engine running method, which is the same type test, except you do it with the engine running. So you plug the scanner in, you turn it on, you start the engine, you press the test button, it runs through the same series of tests, it'll advance the timing and actually allow you to hook up a timing light, good lord, it'll let you hook up a timing light and check that the ignition, um, the electronic advance is advancing properly. So it'll do that and then it'll go through a series of tests with the engine running and let you know what is inoperable or what sensors you may be having issues with the engine running on this. 
So that's three modes, and then that schools will come up as, like I said, the letter R. So that's why this is a pretty cool little tool. It's got three buttons on it. It's got three buttons on it, so it's got the on off, and it's got the test button when it initiates the test, and it's got a memory. So after you run the test, you can unplug this, and it actually stores your last codes in memory. So this is also a neat little tool in where you can actually do some more advanced features we'll go about later. But first, I just kind of want to show you guys how to use one of these and um, how easy they are to use. So, haven't run on this before. Let's see if uh, see if we have any codes. OBD1 Fords or EC4. Um, you've got a plug that looks like this. It looks like the shape of a house with three prongs and a single connector in itself. Um, on my car, it's underneath the wiper motor, the windshield wiper motor, and. It, I think it's supposed to be covered by housing or it's supposed to be covered, you know, in a, you know, I guess in a, you know, have some sort of a, a cover over it to keep the water out, but on mine it's either missing or these don't have it, I don't really know. Um, anyways, it's simple. You just plug it in. It's keyed, so there's no way you can plug it in wrong. And then plug in this little single wire there. And these are pretty much tied together so you know which one's what. This is usually always gray. And you won't be able to see it too clearly. I'm going to try to position this so you guys can see it. But this company also sells, and I think other people sell, um, extension cables, which I'm thinking about getting just for convenience. But it basically just extends this into a longer cable so you can have it out on the fender or even inside the car with you. Next thing we're going to have to do is just simply turn on the key. And turn on the scanner and let's watch it. Okay, I'm trying to put this in a position where hopefully you can see it. Um, it's going to be a little bit upside down, but I think you all are smart enough to be able to read upside down. So let's go ahead and turn the key on. Actually, the scanner should be turned off. We'll turn it on. Okay, and we'll turn on the scanner. The three zeros just indicates that it's powered on. And we're going to go ahead and hit the test button once. There's a little arrow that that comes on, and it basically says that what it's doing is initiating a test. The black square is beeping, telling me that it's reading the codes. And this is the same light that'd be blinking on the older scanners, or in a light if you wanted to plug a light in. This would be the light that's blinking. Now it's counting for us, so it's giving us an 81. So let's take our pen and paper. And also notice that it's got the O. So this is saying that it is a code 81 on key on engine off. That's an 81 zero or 81 engine off code. Okay, you'll see number 10. The 10 indicates that that code is completed and it's proceeding to the next test. And it is actually counting again, so it looks like it's counting a code. And the 34. So we got a 34 and the letter C up here in the top right. I'm going to write that down, 34C. And the C indicates that is a 34 code that's been stored in the continuous memory. So it's a 34C code. And we'll give it some time. This is complete. We can go ahead and turn the unit off. You'll hear the relays click back on or off. And then you can turn the key off. Okay, so once that's been done, you can unplug it. If we turn the unit back on, <clears throat> it's got a memory button. So you can actually click the memory button, cycle through. So now you can take this in with you, you take it over to your book and um, check it out. So 8110, 34. So again, that's 81C, I'm sorry, 810 for key on, engine off, and a 34C, which is a 34 continuous memory. So we'll go to our book and we'll see what these codes mean. The book is really cool. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail about it, but if you do get one of these scanners, I highly recommend reading through this book. It's extremely detailed. It's worth the 20-something bucks probably just in these instructions. Um, it simply goes through the amount of vehicles and motors that OBD-1 or this scanner is compatible with. 
Um, I found out it's pretty much compatible with all Ford um, EEC4 engines. And it goes through some general information you can fill out here, list repairs. This is just a checklist you can run on your own. It goes through the list of EEC systems, gives you a history from 78 on, the difference between EEC 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is what this system is, and even talks a little bit about um, EEC 5, which is OBD2, and which is on your more modern vehicles that um, you're more familiar with that have the uh, OBD2 connection underneath the dash you can plug in computers in. They're pretty highly advanced, and um, anyways, not that this isn't, though. This is good stuff for 86. So if we skip through here, You'll notice that it's got a code retrieval section. And uh, I jotted down here at the beginning 810 and a 34C. So let's look at a 34C. I've highlighted it here for us. So 34C is, and by the way, it's got different 34Cs, it's got four of them. Um, this one is for car only, and this one is for test condition R, which means key on engine running. So we did not get that yet. We haven't tested it, but I did get it in. Oh, so we know this is a key on engine off. I'm sorry, this was in C. So 34C was in continuous memory. Okay, that means insufficient EGR flow or EVP voltage high sonic or PFE sensor voltage high or out of spec. So we'll have to look and see why that is. This, the EGR valve is, is misreading its voltage. And then the other code we got was an 810. Eighty-one O is air diverter solenoid fault, intake air control circuit fault, or air injector diverter. So something's wrong with the air pump, um, air pump diverter. And um, like I said, this is all new. The engine's running fine, but these are good, and we can also go back and you know see what's going on with the motor. So now let's run a um, key on engine running test. O K or K O E R. Similar test. So we'll simply plug this guy back in. Okay. Get it positioned where you guys can see it. Okay, and I apologize, it's a little dark out here, so just trying to get the angle of the screen where you guys can see it, and I had a lot of glare on it with the lights. So we're going to try it this way, and um, same deal. The scanner is off. Let's go ahead and start the engine. Okay, now with the engine running, we're going to turn the scanner on. press the test button again. So you can hear the engine idling up. That's the advanced test. It's showing us the number eight and the cylinder icon. So it's telling us it's an eight cylinder, of course. the black lights, the black square starts beeping or blinking again. So it's idling down and the black square is going to start blinking again, which means it's going to start indicating uh, codes for the key on engine running. So it's blinking now. We got a 21. And a 41. And a 33. Looks like it's starting to repeat, so it's probably done. Okay, so we've got 
on three codes. I want to go ahead and turn the scanner off. And we went ahead and then, you know, turned the engine off. So, okay, so again, it stores it in memory, which is pretty slick. That's one reason I like this one so much. Turn it on, and it kind of gives us a replay of what it just did. So again, this is a little cylinder icon above the 8 there, and that just indicates that it's the 8-cylinder engine. Um, if it was telling us otherwise, you probably got the wrong computer in the car, and it wouldn't be running. 21R. Hopefully you can see it. So 21R, and again, you got the code up here that shows you that it has a key on engine running code. 41R and a 33R. So let's go back to our book and see what these three mean. So 33 is EGR valve is not operating, or opening, excuse me. EGR valve is not opening. 21 is a coolant temperature sensor is out of spec. So that's interesting. Um, this is obviously affects the way the engine runs. It affects its um, how lean or how rich the engine can run. It also affects the gauge on the dash. So that is new. This also is most likely, and I'm going to rerun this test, but I guarantee you guys that this is probably being tripped because the engine's not up to temperature. One thing that it states very clearly here is to make sure that the engine is at operating temperature for running it. Um, another thing I see it's very clearly is not to press the pedal or remove the steering wheel during the test because that triggers multiple codes. So I want to go ahead and just say 21 is most likely a fault because um, I don't know that the engine warm up. So we got a 21, a 33, and we also received an 81. No, I'm sorry, a 41. 41R is the HEGO HO2S, which is the O2 sensor. Sensor voltage low or system is lean. Okay, so that's something we should be concerned about. It's reading, the O2 sensor is reading a lean condition um, in the engine. So, that's uh, that's five codes we have to look at. Um, I'm really concerned about four. Uh, looks like we have an interoperable um, air control valve and an EGR valve and also maybe possibly an O2 sensor that is um, reading incorrectly. Now, another thing you can do with these, these cool scanners, is reset your check engine light. Um, there is a procedure where you go through your continuous memory tests, and I believe it's with K engine running. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more advanced, I guess, tests and procedures with this, we could definitely go through it. I plan on doing it sometime anyways, just, just for fun. But um, the... Um, the procedure is something where as you hold the uh, the hold button and then are you, you you tap it once the codes have been retrieved the uh, continuous memory codes and you press the test button again and it should clear all the codes from the computer also resetting the battery and leaving it disconnected I believe does the same thing so that's something that we probably are going to try as well and we'll reset the codes and then uh, maybe let the engine get the operating temperature and run the test again Another thing you do, there's advanced settings that you can do with this. I've actually never gone through before, but I know they exist. The advanced settings talks about going through um, doing cylinder, cylinder checks. Okay, so yeah, there is advanced or additional settings that you can do with this cool scanner. Um, one of them is doing a relay and solenoid test as an output state check. Um, there's another procedure you can run that actually checks all your relays and um, output voltages. You can also run the cylinder balance test, and this will actually give you codes back on each one of the eight cylinders and tell you if there's an issue with um, cylinders being out of balance. Maybe a firing or a foul plug or something wrong with one of your cylinders where it's not operating is equal to the other eight. So I'm not too familiar with that. I know there's different things you could do as far as pressing the pedal all the way to the floor and releasing. Um, it's all in this book, and if you guys are interested, I'll be happy to you know, run through it. We'll learn this together, and we'll do it. But um, this book is very informative. So again, guys, not bad. 26 bucks. And in case anyone is interested, this is the digital readout, which again I like because you just plug it in, gives you the codes. This is a more traditional, I guess, older um, style ones. You can still get these. And if I'm not mistaken, they're more, if not the same price as the digital readout one.
This is the one I've had for quite some time. Um, I've used it on my 95 F350. I had a 460 in it. And um, same deal, you plug it in into both of your connectors and uh, you turn the key on. You know what? I'll just show you how this works. Um, I'll simulate the key on engine off test. The K E O E. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not right. K O E O. K O E O. K O E O. So we're going to plug it in the same way. This annoying thing starts beeping immediately. And if you have a dog, this will drive him nuts. You can see the light on it. So we're going to go ahead and turn the key on. That does stop the beeping. And same as the other one, this one actually only has an audible on and off and a test or hold. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the test position. All the sound just clicked and it's about to run through the same test. That's an 8. That's a 1. Long pause. Eight, one. So they gave us code eighty one. Much longer pause here, so it's going to initiate the next test. That single beat means it's going to go through the continuous memory. And we'll go ahead and turn the test back off. Turn the key off. And if you're on the super cheap and you don't want to pay 20 something bucks or whatever these both cost, um, you can actually jump. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to double check which wire it is. But there's two of them you could jump one from here and one from one of the terminals in here. You could actually jump it with a, um, you could jump it with a, a, a paper clip or something. If you have a, a uh, check engine light on your dash, it'll use the dash light and blink the dash light and do the same function as this. You could also hook up a Noid light or an LED light and um, hook it into here and it'll flash the LED. So you can, you can make your own scanner if you wanted to. But again, I like the digital one. I'm not a fan of counting beeps. I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine on, let it warm up. We're going to do a quick rescan of the key on engine off test. Oh, I'm sorry, key on engine running. So K O E R. And we're going to make sure that that 21 code goes away whenever we uh, bring up the operating temperature. Interesting, this time we got different codes. Let's see what we got here. A 94 engine running code, a 44, and a 33. So, let's see what this says. 94. Converter clutch control circuit failure. Converter clutch control CCC failure. Nope, sorry. Nope, wrong one, sorry. Air diverter solenoid circuit fault. Air diverter solenoid, okay. 94, 44, thermatic air system fault, and a 33, 
EGR valve. Okay. Well, the 21 went away, as I suspected. That was definitely because the engine was up to operating tension. We still got the 31. And if I'm not mistaken, we got um, some other codes. So we got a, a 30, 30, 33, 94, and a 44. So, yep. So we're getting more codes. Hey, this is fun. Actually, it is. It's really cool. And um, we'll keep taking a look at some of these errors. Okay, guys. So that's it. Go out and pick up a scanner if you don't have one. Um, we got some more tests to do with this. We're going to try to reset the uh, reset the codes, and we're going to try to do a cylinder balance test and do some more reading. See what else we can do with this. So this is pretty cool. And um, we ended up getting a, quite a few codes. So if you guys have any indications on what these codes or how easily they can be fixed, haven't looked at it yet, what we're going to try to do is do some fix on it, see why it's getting the codes they're getting, and try to resolve it. So we're getting a 94, 33, 44 R code. Engine running codes, we're getting an 81 um, engine our key off code and a 34 um, continuous memory code. So we have some codes to look at, and hey, it gives us more work to do on the Mustang. But, anyways, I highly recommend this. Thank you for watching again, guys. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.